Ah, the Ford 6 liter. It always needs some sort of maintenance and one of the most important ones is changing out that fuel filter. I like to stick with the Ford brand Motorcraft filters and supplies. I tend to find they fit well. They've got everything you need as far as gaskets and everything else is concerned and they do actually do a pretty good job. Let me give you a quick idea, sort of an unboxing of what comes in the kit when you buy it so you know what you're up against and what you should expect to find in the box when you buy it. Not tremendously uncommon to have a few pieces missing. So we're going to start underneath the frame rail with the primary fuel filter housing. I'm kind of walking you down and under it here so you know where to look for it. It's right kind of behind the door you see where your front suspension is going to come in and meet right there on the frame rail that's what you're looking for you've got the drain plug there for your water separator and then that cap there that is where the filter is behind you're going to need a 36 millimeter socket to go right on top of that to get that off of there and again kind of keeping the camera on as i back out so you can sort of see what the easiest way of getting in and getting out of that filter housing is it's right there where the suspension meets the frame I like to tackle the drain first for the water separator. Get that open, start letting that drain out quite a bit. Sometimes you'll find some really funky slop in there and the longer you can have that open, the more of that sweet, delicious diesel slop can find its way out. So it's not the easiest thing to get on and off. I will not be reinstalling this cap. The, uh, I've had my fill of taking it on and off and you'll see a lot of the wear that's happened from rust and water up against it for its lifetime. It's been separating water in there and I'm going to be putting in a brass one instead of a steel one and it's going to be easier to get a wrench on and get in and out every time I change the oil. I like to drain that and making it easier is always better. Once you got this drain plug out, you're going to let that drain. While it's draining, you're going to pull your filter out, change that out. This is a 36 millimeter shallow socket. This is what you're going to want for getting on top of there. I don't know why I chose this angle in the first place to go with this to get that off, but you'll see it's not tremendously successful, but I figured I'd leave it in to show everybody that this isn't the greatest way to go after it. Now that I let everybody see, that's kind of a dummy's errand trying to go at it from that angle. When you actually bring that in straight on, you have a much better chance of getting that out of there properly. I don't know what I was thinking. It does take a tremendous amount of oomph to get that cap loose. It's always snug, it's always difficult. I always worry that I'm gonna break that top off of that plastic housing, but I never do, and it always ends up coming loose. So if yours is fighting, and you feel like you're putting a little too much torque on it, that's probably just the way it is. Don't be too surprised. You can keep a catch pan underneath this as you pull this filter out, but don't worry, it's guaranteed to catch on the frame rail and all the parts of the suspension and go absolutely everywhere, and you just cannot contain all of it, but you can try your best and get as much as you can. And why it is that this cap, being part of regular maintenance, is so hard to get in and out of here i cannot figure out i just assumed they'd make it easy because you got to do it pretty often but not so much and things were not running great, and this is most likely why. I don't know whether I got bad fuel or what the problem was, but there was some slop in there that was worse than usual. So, that filter goes away, 
clean this cap up real good, get all that uh, conjunctivitis out of there. We're going to pop in a new one. And off the top of my head, I'm not quite sure what the recommended change out is for these filters. You're looking at about 10K on these filters here. I probably should be switching them out at a little closer to about 6,000, but that's uh, kind of how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you forget to change stuff out when you're supposed to, but I don't think they should look as bad as they do when I pull them out, but sometimes they do. Your new filters are going to come with some new gaskets, so every time you're changing this stuff out, make sure you pop the new one on. It's, uh, I guess it's something that can shred or tear or get all torn up every time you're taking it on and off. So change that out. They come in this little package here. You want the larger of the two for underneath the truck, then you want the smaller of the two for the filter that's underneath the hood. That's right, this has got two fuel filters. You're going to do one underneath. It is the worst by far out of the two of them. The second one, much easier. So here we go. Time to start installing some of the new stuff. You're going to take the filter that matches the one that you pulled out. Kind of obvious, but I figured I'd throw it out there. If it doesn't look like the one that you took out, don't try to shove it in there. It probably will not work. You're going to want to check that housing, clean it out as best you can because you figure the junk that you found in the cap is also in that housing. So once you've done that, you pay attention to the direction of that filter. You're gonna shove that in there, stick the cap over top of it, tighten that down. It's not a real complicated process. Sometimes the threads on that cap don't wanna grab right away, but that's pretty much it. Getting the cap in through the frame is about the hardest part. As far as how tight to make this cap goes, I don't really know for sure. I'm sure there's some sort of spec. Once it looks like it's seated all the way on, that's kind of where I stop. You'll notice as I'm turning the cap on, there's little pulses of fluid coming out of that water separator drain that I've left out. That right there is exactly why I leave that out. If there's anything in there, this is the perfect time for that pressure of the filter going in to push any debris out that you can't see. Since that drive shaft to the front axle is right in front of that drain port, you can't really give it a good visual inspection. So I kind of let this pressure push all that junk out. So we've got our old drain plug here. As you can see, it looks like hell. It is all rusted out on the top side. It does not look good. It's missing a pretty decent chunk of it. That is all just rusted away. So I went and got myself a nice replacement that actually has all of its threads on it and will seat in there properly. And thank you eBay. Look at that beauty. It's shiny. It's actually got a hex top on it so that I can put a wrench on it instead of having to use Allen wrenches all the time. It's a bit of a bugger to get in, but uh, you get that in there, tighten it up, and now you got something that you can change out much, much easier whenever you need to drain that water out of there. And for me, this was accidentally convenient, but that new drain plug right there is exactly the same size as the oil pan drain plug. So now I only need one wrench when I'm going to change the oil and drain the water out of there. So here we are. We made it topside. This is a half inch ratchet. It's right in the top of that uh, fuel filter housing that's over top of the block. All you're going to do is just loosen that up, pull that off, and you'll find a filter underneath. And if you've made it this far, you're enjoying what you're seeing, 
you uh, could consider hitting that like button. Maybe you've watched one or two of my videos and you're liking them. Maybe consider throwing a subscribe my way. I'd greatly appreciate it. So this filter here, it's kind of sometimes a bit of a bugger to pull up. It sits over top of a little something in the center, kind of locks onto it. Now that filter's out of there, you want to get either a turkey baster in there and suck the fluid out, or I just stick a rag in there, soak it up. Sometimes there is debris in the bottom of this housing, so you want to try to get that out of there. You don't want to leave any debris in there, just in case. So however you go about getting it out of there, try to get it out. Here is gasket number two. This one is thinner. It's a little harder to get off, a little harder to get on, but not too bad. Change that out. There you go. Time to pop in that filter. It is directional. The open end of it does go down. Sometimes it's a little tough to get it in there. You got to give it a little wiggle and it's going to be springy then. That cap's actually going to push it down into a spring. Just thread your cap on, tighten that up. And then you're uh, good to go as far as filter changing is concerned. It's pretty much the excitement of it. There is some sort of torque spec on the top of the cap. I've never actually paid attention to what it says or what it means. I do the same thing as I do on the bottom. I just tighten it up to where I feel it's reasonable and that's where I stop. It hasn't given me a problem yet. And then from here, that's it. You don't have to bleed anything. You don't have to try to get air at anything. You just fire it up. And this is where we're going to say goodbye for now, and thanks for watching.